Hey everyone, this is Yasarian. I'm making this guide on uh, Time Splitters 2 modding to help out with making it easier to get into it because there's a lot of. It's pretty complex and there isn't much of a starting guide. There's a lot of useful information you can look up online, but I figured I'd try to make it easier for people to get into it by explaining the basics and working from there. So, to start off outside of a Time Splitters 2 ISO, you're gonna need a few things. The first is HXD, which is a freeware hex editor. You're going to be using this to make a lot of the changes to the ISO. And you can download it on the website shown here. It's free, and I've had it for a while now, so I'm pretty sure it's safe. The second is the Time Splitters 2 GC ISO stuff document made by Dude3500. His document covers so much of the game, it's unbelievable how much he's documented. Like, different aspects of the gun stats, or the damage ID, or even some fixes he made for different aspects of the game, like letting you have tons of enemies in Map Maker respawn, or letting you play co-op in story mode of Map Maker. So you're going to want to have that, but I would recommend saving it to your favorites instead of downloading it, because from time to time, he'll update it with new info. The third you're going to want is a hex calculator, and that you can just pull up online anytime you want. I use calculator.net slash hex calculator.html. This is used for fi figuring out different locations in the ISO, because in addition to figuring out where like each thing is located. You have to add up certain values to figure out where like the game decides how much ammo you get from the flamethrower or how much ammo the Luger pistol has in its clip. So to start off you're gonna want to make a copy of that ISO just so if you make any mistakes it doesn't ruin the copy of the game you have and you have to download a new one. When you open it up it's gonna look a little intimidating there are going to be a lot of numbers and a lot of values, but in time you'll learn how to work through all this and figure out what the important stuff is. big thing with hex editing is that it measures values numerically and through letters. It goes from 0 to 9, and then there's A, which is equal to 10, B, which is equal to 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14 and F equals 15. So that means that values can take on all sorts of uh, different meanings. Like, I'm pretty sure that the value of 14 in hexadecimal is 20 in decimal. Yeah, it is. It's because of, like, ending with the F and then going back through. 10, 11, 12, 13, so on and so forth. So to start out, we're just going to handle a few uh, weapon changes. Just some simple stuff to get our, just get ourselves used to it. This is how I started out, just tweaking some guns in order to make things a little different. Best way to handle that is to look at the, go on to the document and look at the ISO value for each weapon. And this will list, like, what each uh, value in the ISO relates to. It'll list it by each hex value, different things like uh, what model it'll show, what ammo type it uses, how fast it fires, how much of a delay there is between reloads and stuff like that. So what I do is I copy the ISO value I go into HXD, and then it's going to ask for an offset. That's going to be that ISO value you're going to plug in. So put in two zeros, and then paste in the ISO value. Once that happens, it'll pull you right to where the heart of the stuff is. In this case, what you're looking at now from this thing onward are the values that determine how the silence pistol works. What we're going to do is just something simple. We're gonna give it some more ammo. It has about eight shots, which is eight also in hexadecimal. So to figure out where the clip size is, we're gonna paste in 
the ISO value. And then we're going to add in the value for its clip size, which is 0014. So copy that and put it in the hex calculator. And that'll get you this value right here. You're going to want to copy that and put it in the go to value again, keeping those two zeros there just so you get to the right one. So this shows the clip size of the silenced pistol, which gives us 8. Let's increase that. Let's, let's give ourselves some more ammo. So, it's 8 still equals 8 in hexadecimal. Let's see what... I don't know. Let's see what 17 is equal to. 17 is equal to 11. So we are going to replace 8 with 11. Now the silenced pistol is going to have 17 shots. If you want those changes to apply, the text will be read until you save it, and this will show that a value has changed. So you're going to hit this button up here, or hit Control and S at the same time in order to save it. Sometimes HXD will create a backup file, just in case you mess things up with whatever copy you're modding, which can be handy too. Alright, now that we've made a basic change to the silence pistol, let's try something a little different. If you scroll down, you'll find more weapons down here, including some stuff that only NPCs can use, and a few unused weapons. But we're just going to mess around with basic stuff right now. Now the crossbow has a different ISO value. We're going to plug that into the hex calculator. And then, let's change its projectile. The projectiles are all listed in the document as well. There are a bunch of them. And the damage they do can sometimes depend on what projectile it is. Anything explosive has its own unique damage value. Anything else will just take on whatever damage value you assign it. So let's give it something fun. Let's find the Reaper Splitter Lightning Bolts. Right here, uh, ID 26. So 26, we're going to replace that for the crossbow bolts. We just got to find those next to make sure we know what we're replacing. Okay, cross bolt, 23. Alright, so now we know what to replace. Scroll back to gun stats, and scroll over. We're looking for projectile ID, which is 64 here. paste this in again. So it shows 23 as the projectile value. We're going to put up a 26, so every time you shoot the crossbow, it'll shoot out a lightning bolt. Something important to note is that the primary and secondary fire for the gun, for any gun in this game, will have different values. Usually they'll shoot the same thing because of uh, the way the game works, but sometimes they have different alt fires, like the S47 shooting off grenades. So you're going to need to replace both the primary and alt fire projectile IDs in order to get what you want. In this case it's 0114. So we're going to go there, get this value, and replace it. You can see right there, that's the value we changed already, and this is the one we're going to change to. So we're going to make both of these 26, and save it. Once the save becomes more transparent, you'll know what went through. So now we have a silenced pistol that has 17 shots, and a crossbow that shoots lightning bolts. Now we're going to see how it works in-game, just to make sure everything went through. Alright, once you got Time Splitters 2 loaded up, you're going to want to go into Arcade. The best place to test out weapon changes is Arcade, because it won't crash if it loads something it shouldn't. 
that isn't already in the level. You can fix this in story mode, but that's a lesson for later. Right now, let's just focus on the basics. We're gonna go to hangar. We're gonna change up the weapon set a bit. Get ourselves a silenced pistol, silenced pistol times two, and a bunch of crossbows. Let's just get the recommended bot set on there too. All right. Now bots should be able to handle weapon changes just fine as well. And as you can see, we have a ton of ammo for the silenced pistol and there are lightning bolts being shot at us. One thing that you might want to do is increase the fire rate for the silenced pistol. We'll go over that too. You can also change projectile speed and other stuff like that. Now because the crossbow uses an explosive shot from the lightning bolts, it's going to deal a different amount of damage than the usual crossbow. That's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you guys got something out of this, and I hope it helps get a basic gist on how modding works. Next time, I'll go over more complex stuff. We'll be editing things like uh, fire speed, and damage ID, and everything of that sort. So, thank you for watching. Hope you found this entertaining, or at least informative, and see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.